Okay, sorry about that. Just with all the stress this camera has put me through over the last six months, I needed a quick snack before I get started. One moment, please. The Ripjaws KM570 mechanical keyboard from G-Skill features full RGB, a simple design, Cherry MX switches, and more. Check it out now at the link below. Now, RED cameras are inherently difficult to review because their modularity allows nearly unlimited different configurations. So I'll focus on the build out we chose for flexibility today and easy adaptability for more specialized rigs in the future. We ended up with more first party accessories than many users because my personal experience and anecdotal evidence suggests that third party accessories can lead to compatibility issues down the road. And at least if we experience a device failure, there's only one contact we need for support. Something we did end up needing, more on that later. As for audio, when Linus did his original unboxing for the weapon, we had planned to use the Off Hollywood OMOD. But after a few weeks, it would be generous to say that for $2,500, it wasn't giving us the audio quality we expected. So when Beach Tech offered to send us their new DXA Cine and DXA Alexa, we were really excited to find a solution that didn't compromise on quality or workflow. Synchronizing audio in post is fine for feature films, but it's a nightmare for our rigorous daily release schedule. The DXA Alexa is our daily driver, now thanks to its two full-size XLR inputs and phantom power, but the DXA Cine is smaller, gives you the same fine control with hardware buttons, and is much less expensive if you're running and gunning with powered mics like Sennheiser's AVX system, or something that doesn't need power like a Rode Video Mic Go. Okay, enough about audio. Let's talk about the most obvious reason you want to buy this camera, the sensor. In the weapon body, or brain as Red likes to call it, their helium sensor shoots at a whopping 8192 by 4320 at up to 60 frames per second. But the benefit of this is not immediately obvious to the average person. It's not about publishing at 8K for the dozen or so people out there with 8K displays. It's about flexibility in post. Being able to stabilize and punch in with a very minimal loss in image quality is great. And for VFX work, it can be an absolute godsend. But don't take my word for it. Hello, you're probably wondering what the heck I'm doing here. My name is Nico and I'm part of a channel called Corridor. And we shoot a lot of stuff on the RED cameras. And Linus and Brandon asked me to actually talk about resolution. Because these cameras shoot up to 8K, but TVs only go up to 4K. So why shoot in the higher resolution if no one has a display to watch it? There's actually a couple of useful things that it does or that it enables a filmmaker to do. For example, when you shoot 8K footage, you can zoom into the footage, reframe it, crop it, pan and scan without any noticeable loss of sharpness, up to a certain point, of course. But you can zoom in 150%, 180%, sometimes even 200%, and you can't tell that it was zoomed in. David Fincher actually does this quite a bit on House of Cards. It's one of the ways he can get those perfect symmetrical compositions because in post they'll go in and reframe the frame to make it perfect. Another thing you can do with the extra resolution is get better motion tracking because more resolution means more detail to track. More detail to track means more points. More points means a better camera saw. So for visual effects artists, the extra resolution can be nice. And finally, the thing that I find most useful is downsampling. So if you're shooting in 8K and you're delivering to a 4K television, well, you downsample that 8K to 4K, that means that you take four pixels and average them out to one pixel for delivery. So it makes your image cleaner. For example, if it's underexposed or you had pushed the color grade quite a bit and it's starting to get noisy, that noise starts to disappear. And if you're delivering to 1080p and you're shooting in 8K, that's a 16 to 1 pixel ratio. So you're taking 16 pixels, averaging them down to 1 pixel for 1080p delivery, meaning you have a lot more leeway with getting grainy footage or pushing your color grade. And maybe it's not perfect, but once you downsample it that far, it looks really clean. So there's a couple different perks for a filmmaker to shoot in a higher resolution, and those are just some of them. Anyways, I hope that was useful. Hope I could help a little bit, and uh, I'll give it back to Brandon. Thanks. But resolution is actually just a small part of the story here. Much more important is Helium's impressive 16.5 stops of dynamic range, the 10 years of work Redis put into their color science, and the post-production flexibility afforded by the proprietary RedCode RAW file format. Some of you might not know this, but outside of Linus Tech Tips, I actually spend a great deal of my personal time shooting shorts, web series and pretty stock footage that I mostly don't get paid for. But I do it because I love it. And I guess that's where the weapon shines for me. Flexibility. Every time I take it or its little cousin, the Epic W, out into the world, usually with a ferocious guard dog to keep us both safe, it puts a big smile on my face, both during shooting and while reviewing footage later. 
This gear was obviously a huge investment for us as a company, but shooting a mix of our daily releases, our bigger projects, and my personal stuff, I've been hard pressed to find something, anything I can throw at it in the real world that it can't handle. And that's ignoring the fun, yes, I find it fun, of grading the files in Premiere. Even at high compression ratios, which helps us save space on Red's proprietary Minimag SSDs, I am super impressed by how much latitude there is, especially when trying to pull out details out of dark areas of a scene, even at a high ISO, which is an area where the previous 6K Dragon sensors struggled. Not to mention that as a relatively new Red user, the ability to change ISO or white balance after the fact contribute a layer of flexibility that I am still getting used to. However, this flexibility is not an excuse for shooting incorrectly in the first place. Like any piece of professional equipment, a red weapon does not make you the next Roger Deakins. Sure, you can crank the ISO to 2000 in an effort to mask your lighting errors with a high quality camera, and a lot of people would never notice, but to truly get the most out of it, you have to be aware that a camera has a native ISO where its dynamic range capabilities are ideal. And everything, lighting, makeup, ND filters, exposure, aperture, shutter speed, everything, needs to be balanced to get the right amount of light on the sensor if you want the highest quality digital negative. And that's important because with RED's new image processing pipeline, even users of older RED cameras can go back and reprocess their RED RAW footage with IPP2 for a fairly significant improvement in image quality. It's still beta, but it shows a dedication to support that I have to admire. Okay, so this is the dream camera that everyone thinks it is, right? Smooth sailing, right? Well, Actually, like any camera nerd, I was more excited than I had almost ever been to open a box when it arrived. But from day one until now, we've had such a laundry list of issues with both of our cameras that I don't have enough time to talk about all of them, so I'll just give you the highlights. Our biggest consistent issue has been with our 960 gig mini mags. I've heard the arguments defending Red's proprietary SSD media, it's more reliable and therefore worth the high cost, but any SSD can fail. And while we haven't actually lost any footage between these stress inducing mounting issues and having four of our 960 gig mags fail over a span of six months, I'm with Linus on this one. The solution to reliable storage, remember this is a camera that might be used for a $50 million production or higher, is not $3,000 MCA SSDs. No matter how much pixie dust is in them, the actual solution to reliable storage is redundancy. To Red's credit, they offered us a three year warranty upgrade for both of our cameras with two free 960 gig mags as a way of saying, sorry your seven inch display, mags, weapon brain, and Epic W brain twice had to be R made. But just speaking honestly as a customer, it's caused delays in our production schedule and hasn't given us the warm and fuzzy feeling that we should be getting when we're buying the best of the best. With all of that said, However Linus might feel about the price tag, we clearly haven't boxed them back up for a refund. Are they overkill for YouTube? Yes. But does that mean we will continue to bring you guys videos shot in 8K anyway? Also yes. We aren't going to turn into fanboys, but the image quality and flexibility have brought us into the RED ecosystem for the foreseeable future. One of the worst parts of being a small business owner, let's say you, uh, you're an electrical contractor or something like that, is dealing with accounting. It's complicated, it's time consuming, and it doesn't have to be. FreshBooks is the cloud-based accounting software built for how you want to work. It's a simple way to be more productive, more organized, and get paid faster. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can set up online payments with just a couple of clicks. You can get paid on your terms, including taking deposits through the platform, and you can see when your client has seen your invoice to put an end to the guessing games. For an unrestricted 30-day free trial, just go to www.freshbooks.com slash tech tips and enter Linus Tech Tips in the how did you hear about us section. So thank you guys for watching. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out where to buy the stuff we feature. Well, where to buy red in the link in the video description. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which you can buy cool t-shirts not like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. Also let me know in the comments down below if you guys want us to do a video covering our 8K post workflow. And any further questions, please hit me up on Instagram or Twitter linked below.